All right, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to discuss whether or not old vintage lenses and old DSLRs are going to give you a vintage look. Now, just a quick mention before we get started. This video is sponsored by Dehancer. They were kind enough to provide me with a license for Dehancer Film Pro. And other than that, they haven't seen this video and they haven't told me what to show you or tell you about Dehancer. So it's all going to be my honest opinions about Dehancer and how it can help us achieve this uh, fancy vintage look. We are going to go over what exactly is a vintage look, how do old lenses contribute to the look of your photos, what do the old cameras actually do different than the newer ones, and why I think that modern photos are kind of getting too perfect. So let's start out with what do these old lenses actually do. The vintage look is basically what I associate with old album photos from my childhood and my parents childhood. These are often old 35mm photos taken with compact cameras, often not DSLRs, uh, I mean SLR cameras, analog SLRs, most often not taken by professional ph photographers, they are often taken by amateurs and these photos often have in common that they look really good and they represent a look that we are kind of often going for and how can we achieve this look well we have to analyze uh, what uh, actually makes this look so first we're going to go through uh, just in short what do these old lenses actually do now here's a couple of vintage old lenses this is a uh, 135 millimeter f 3.5 um, something something russian soviet union stuff and this is a uh, Tokina, I believe it's a 80 to 200 millimeter, and uh, you kind of zoom it like this, and fancy stuff. Um, these are fun toys, um, they do have a specific look to them, but that look isn't inherently a analog look or a film-like look, they are really just bad lenses. They are cheap. I don't believe that these were uh, very expensive when they were new. These are obviously super old, um, but they they weren't premium lenses and they don't have good optical qualities. They do make lots of flare. Some of them have weird bokeh like the Helios 44 lenses and um, most of them are really not sharp, especially when uh, wide open. And they're manual focus, so you are going to miss the focus on pretty much every shot, unless it's a completely static shot that you can use your digital um, uh, viewfinder and zoom in and make the focus super precise. You're going to miss the, fo uh, the focus on these lenses. So they kind of comp contribute with a bad optics quality, but this is one of the components of these old photos that you love so much. The optics quality on those isn't really good and that is one of the elements that we are looking for. So these can absolutely help in giving you a vintage look but they will not do the job on their own. If you just take a bunch of photos with uh, ancient lenses on a new super good camera and you nail everything else, it's just going to look like you used cheap lenses and missed the focus on every shot. So what do the old cameras do? This is a Canon 400D. I have a video on this. It's uh, just a basic old DSLR camera. Um, it has bad highlight roll off and weird colors sometimes. Just doesn't really render grass very well unless you tweak the photos a lot. But you can shoot raw and you can have a, a bunch of editing possibilities with it. Um, the viewfinder is really tiny doesn't help at all with uh, nailing the focus. This does not have live view. So there is really no way that you can be sure when focusing, especially with these wide aperture old lenses. So what does this bring to the table? Well, you're going to miss on the focus a lot more with this, and you're going to miss with the exposure and you're gonna get more motion blur because they are worse when it comes to high ISO. And does that help us? Well, uh, in the context of bringing all the elements of vintage photos together, it absolutely, absolutely works. Uh, but then again, if you use high quality lenses, do everything right, 
uh, but use an old camera it's just gonna look like you have problems with getting the exposure and focus right um, but these do contribute to many of the imperfections that you will see on old photos so if you can combine this with the qualities of the old lenses the qualities or let's say bad qualities of old lenses and bad qualities of this camera and the final ingredient which is going to be dehancer then this is going to be kind of interesting so for the last point before we go into dehancer why do i think that cameras are getting too perfect or photos are getting too perfect uh, right now we're having cameras with uh, tens of megapixels uh, even sure there's something with over 100 megapixels now we have way more resolution than we ever need we have focus that nails every single time and what we're basically ending up with is a bunch of photos that are going to look like they are AI generated because they are too perfect now when we took photos 40 50 or 20 years ago photos weren't turning up perfect and some of them were unfocused and that's kind of a part of the story of the photos and when we're just chasing the perfection of the photos we're leaving the art behind um, so once you just embrace that missing the focus uh, having too much motion blur having too much noise it's just part of the art it's part of the image then you're kind of unlocking the potential of these old vintage uh, lenses and uh, the potential of, of getting that old nice and cozy vintage look so if we can just kind of abandon this race for perfection and settle for something that's good enough and combine it with some new and fancy tools when it comes to editing we can get some really nice photos so we're gonna go into Lightroom right now and see what we got so now that we've established that analog vintage DSLRs and vintage lenses won't really give you an instant uh, result of film-like quality we can uh, have a look and see if Dehancer can do the trick so I've installed Dehancer onto my Lightroom Classic and I have a selection of photos that I've mostly taken last year these photos are taken with um, some of them with my Sony a6400 and some of them with my Canon uh, 400D with uh, and both of them are with um, some vintage uh, lenses manual focus old lenses that I have and uh, no, we can have a look through them um, this is just the raw files with absolutely no adjustments or editing and as you can see there's there's not really anything inherently vintage looking about this you can see that the contrast is really low and these are just kind of uh, walk in the park photos and yeah I would say they do have some interesting characteristics because of the low contrast and the high amount of flare that you get with some of these lenses uh, obviously some extremes and errors taking the photos directly into the sun this picture of the guy in the boat if we zoom in we can see that these these lenses are are really not sharp but this is kind of what I talked about um, the, the unsharpness of these lenses might actually be what you are looking for because these imperfections are really interesting when you think about it and they are what actually gives you some some vintage qualities here again you can see the low contrast and the flare from the sun so this these are some uh, these photos can be some good source material to get some vintage looking uh, results but as you can see right now they just look like digital photos taken with low quality lenses and there's really no reason why I couldn't just be doing this with a uh, low quality budget uh, lens made for the digital uh, DSLRs in the 2000s the lenses that people are basically giving away for free now because 
the optical imperfections in those lenses aren't really any different than the optical imperfections in uh, old vintage lenses. The old vintage lenses are just way harder to focus because you are relying on manual focus. But then again, slightly out of focus photos or soft photos might in some cases be what you are actually looking for. Like this photo, which is taken with a 135 millimeter uh, analog, or should I say vintage uh, lens, manual focus um, that has a damaged element, which makes all the photos turn out really fussy and smooth and soft. Um, that softness might actually be what you want if you can just get over the urge to have everything as sharp as possible. So you can see here lots of chromatic aberrations and and stuff. So this is just to show that these vintage lenses are not gonna give you an instant film looking result. This one again, taking with the damaged lens. Um, so let's Let's give this photo a try. I haven't adjusted anything in Lightroom. All the settings are uh, at zero. Let's right click, light, right, right. Let's right click and uh, edit in the Hanser Lightroom. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And now we are in Lightroom. No, sorry. We and now we are in Dehancer. So this is the Dehancer panel. This is the Dehancer version 2.5, the beta version, and it's still loading in some profiles. There you go. On the left, we can choose the film type and uh, uh, just to filter out some color negative color positive, exotic cross. I don't really know, I'm, I'm not an expert in old films, so I don't know what this means, but I'll just uh, put that on old films. And then we got lots of profiles. And uh, these are the same that I can choose on this menu. And as we can see here, there are so many presets that you can easily get uh, overwhelmed by the amount, but and here I would just go and uh, and have a look at how some of them look. And as you can see now, when we're combining the imperfections of the bad optics qualities with the Hanser film, which is, I don't even have any words for this. This, this is just pure magic, in my opinion. Now we can see that it just doesn't look like a digital photo with a an Instagram filter on it, but it actually looks fairly believable as a film print. And obviously we have so many different profiles to choose from, but there's just something about it. Just look at this, the, the teal qualities of the, um, of the water and, and the kind of cold feeling of the colors I don't know what the answer does but it just it just nails the whole film quality thing and I know that the answer isn't the first to do this but I'm a presets kind of guy and for me to achieve this by doing lots of manual adjustments would just be extremely resource intensive so this is really amazing what what the answer can do and it's and it's just so simple i can just go for a preset and basically i, uh, I kind of like all of them um so these are the um, the film kind of uh, film profiles that come with the answer and we can also on the top left go to the presets and um these are uh, basically kind of other uh, profiles done by, I guess, other people, some by the Dehancer team. 
and there's just basically a lot more presets to go through. And if you're not a preset kind of guy, you can always just um, you can always just uh, adjust everything yourself on the right hand side. We got film developer, film compression, expand, print, color head, film grain. I know what film grain is, but <laughs> uh, I must admit, I don't know what color head uh, actually is. But you can drag and do stuff with all of these and you can do all sorts of amazing things. Now, one thing that is new in the 2.5 beta is the film damage option. This is um, just just the kind of imperfections in the form of hair and dust and scratches. So if we get, just go all the way on this, you can see the small white specks appearing. And if we go all the way on the hairs, you see some more hairs appearing. Obviously this is way overdone, but this is just to, to illustrate what it does. And then we got the scratches. We can go all the way up. And this is really subtle. I can't really tell right now, but I think these are some some darker, almost like some dark hairs appearing. And we can adjust the total amount, just multiplies everything. And we can adjust, um, let's say we want to have the hairs more black instead of white. And we can just uh, the scale and the size balance, as you can see. Oh, it's it's obviously way over the top. If you if you want to do film damage, you just got to be very subtle. Otherwise, it just looks kind of fake. But it's a nice it's a nice little touch that you can do. And. Uh, just kind of adds to the adds to the fancy things that the answer can do to your photos. So let's try some more photos. Um, let's move out of this. Let's go for let's go for these uh, flowers. This this isn't really a photo that I'm super proud of, but just let's see what uh, the answer can uh, do about it. And right away, you can just tell how the the mood kind of changes. Uh, it just goes from being a random digital photo to something that maybe a kid uh, took with a grandpa's old uh, 35 millimeter compact camera back in the days. Let's go for um, let's go for some some instant types like the. Um, the Instax Polaroid films. I tend to like the looks of these. Yeah, this one's really nice. And let's uh, let's remove the the damage. Oh, sorry, that was the film grain. Remove the film damage on this one, and just just look at what it does to the highlights. It's almost like the the highlight roll off um, just turns so film like instead of the harsh highlight roll off that you get with digital photos. And with this one, I would maybe I think I think the grain might be a little bit too intensive just for this photo. I'm not really thinking about what's uh, authentic for the Fujifilm Instax, but I just thought the gain, uh, the grain was a little bit too intensive here. So let's just go it down a bit on the grain. Let's reduce the size. And there we go. Just a hint less grain and it just looks amazing I I still I don't know what the Hanser does but they're onto something let's go for um, let's 
go for one of these sunset photos. This one. This is kind of a cozy, nice and cozy photo. Let's edit in the enhancer. And right now we are in the Fujifilm Instax. I don't know if I think the Instax was the right one for this, so let's um, let's go for something else. And now it's just fun to just scroll through the presets and and look at the incredible changes that you get with the different film types. Now this photo is really high in contrast already. So it's kind of a it's kind of a challenge. I think I like this one. This kind of preserved the the shadows a bit more. You can also do this push pull thing which i guess uh, simulates the um, simulates the development uh, process of the film so on this i would actually like to push it up a little bit And again, it's just, the results are just so cool. Let's try another one. Uh, let's do this uh, with the, this boat. And again, this is kind of a photo where optics quality is really bad. This is not a sharp photo by any means, but it lends itself to getting a nice vintage uh, result, I think. Let's go to the presets and try some of those. And this is with uh, nothing and And boom, instant, instant gratification if you want a uh, vintage uh, film look. Uh, it just does something magical to the highlights. And you know, you could just sit and scroll through presets for hours on this. Uh, let's go back to the the films. Yeah, I like this one. It's really cold and you can tell kind of the the white balance is technically way off, but again, this is this is all about the imperfections making the art. And we can go and see if we can't uh, adjust some, make some changes here. I want I want to go even colder actually. Gives it a nice morning vibe. This was taken really early in the morning. Let's have a look at what the film compression can do. This is what I can tell from the histogram below is just compressing the the highlights. So it can just watch the sky and, and the water. It just pulls in the, the highlights a bit. And uh, I kind of like that. Shadows. 
shadow tone on the color head. Let's go a hint warmer on that. And the halation. Uh, I'm not going to touch that. Let's add some film. Oops. Let's add some film damage. Just a tiny hint. You can see there's a couple of scratches here and there. A scratch here, a scratch there. Just to change the balance between the white and black hairs and scratches. And that looks really nice, I think. do one last image uh, these rocks kind of like this photo it, it's just a uh, the light and um, the vibe of the whole thing feels like summer you know and you can see now this Fujifilm FP 100c preset just intensifies that feeling of this is uh, just a kind of a, a fresh morning and the film look just does everything here and here is where I think uh, the answer really shines because here we have a nice uh, combination of the, the teal water and the orange highlights Uh, let's do some exposure compensation just to kind of bring up the the whole exposure here. Let's have a look at some uh, at some yeah there is some film damage here and just looking at what this did to the whole photo it's just it's just so so incredible. So that is kind of the conclusion here. Um, the answer is what brings the whole <coughs> film emulation magic. Um, you can't really emulate film by using analog lenses because old analog, uh, I mean old manual focus lenses, old manual focus lenses are mostly just low quality lenses but the low quality aspect of it brings some some nice artistic vibes to the image but it doesn't bring a film look by itself and old DSLRs also don't really bring a film look by themselves but um, but the, the processing of the image files is what does it but again old DSLRs may bring more imperfections to the images and Imperfections are what you most often associate with old film images and just applying a film filter to a way to perfect image will just look like a digital image with a film filter. So having these um, optical imperfections and poor highlight performance of old cameras will bring the kind of imperfections that you need to get a good look on your image. Thanks a lot to the Dehancer team for providing me with this uh, license. And uh, Dehancer is definitely on my uh, go-to list in the future, not just for making emulated film photos, but in general for editing photos, just to bring that extra vibe to the images. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.